like Christmas having the right side boat up sitting in the shop. Well, I kind of hate to mess up the nice clean inside of the boat, but it's going to be messed up for quite a while to come. So we'll start trimming down the shear. So what are we trying to do here? Uh, the reference line is right where the shear goes to zero up against the plywood on a level across to the other side. Land and success, tape leg repair, round two. Dang <laughs> Well, milestone on this uh, project, I posted the first video to a new YouTube channel. <laughs> uh, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, we are ready for the big interior epoxy. As you can see, I have cut out... Um, pieces of cloth. Most of this I was able to get out of the leftovers from the hull, especially toward the bow and stern. Large pieces got cut off, if you remember. So, uh, in the past I haven't bothered to glass uh, these forward sections or the sides. I think there's plenty of strength. New pump. It's in the middle of the big epoxy and this pump broke. I really thought I was screwed. But fortunately, I had an extra replacement sitting around ready to go. So, I took the opportunity to also replace the hardener pump here. stuff in here I'm not sure tried twice to take this up and 
get these bubbles out and I think they're more than bubbles and I tried to get debris out and couldn't find debris. So we'll see when that starts cured up I guess we can sand through it and maybe even patch it if necessary. But loving that contrast of the Sapele and the bright birch and uh, pretty much got all of the surfaces that hadn't been coated yet started. Laid a bunch of extra down in this seam, let gravity feed it in where it wants to go. Same along the uh, keelson. And uh, when that's just beyond tacky, we'll come out and do another pass on the glass. All right, uh, just barely tacky in spots. Uh, coat one epoxy here. Like this is not tacky at all. So I think we're gonna go ahead and do a second coat of epoxy. Well, we got our second coat is uh, beyond tacky, but I had to wait and see the end of that Ohio State Michigan game, which was fantastic. So we'll put our third coat on. All right, third coat of epoxy's on, and uh, the weave should be just about disappeared. When this cures up, big old sand, and ready for um, serious work on the interior. Hmm. Not much fun. Uh, taking a little break. I'm gonna try to get some of this uh, task of caulking around all those interior seams started. <clears throat> it's getting cold again, but uh, we'll see if we can keep the shop hot, hot enough to uh, make it cure. A couple of things about this, now that we're into a big scale pass of the epoxy putty deal. Um, Doug Labor from Great Midwest gave me a tip that uh, you want to squeeze this, this caulking, epoxy caulking. Uh, like everything else with epoxy, it's really difficult to like reuse a caulking tube or something like that. That stuff sets. I don't know how to do it. I'm sure there are ways. But you cut a corner off of a sandwich bag and put the caulking down in there and you can squeeze it out the tube like cake mix. Of course, it becomes disposable. The other thing, uh, we got some thickeners. This is uh, cut fiberglass. For color then, I'm going to take some sawdust that's collected of the right kind of wood, the right kind of colored wood, run it through a strainer to get the big stuff out. Uh, the only problem with the sawdust is it makes your epoxy go less far because it absorbs it. So we're going to mix some of that up and uh, start running some caulking beads. Use this bag once, but it's got another corner. I think we can get two runs out of it. Let's get a little color in there. We want light color this time. It's a squeegee. Kind of prefer using a roller and brush generally, but uh, this for squeegeeing the corners. We'll see if we can get that to work again. I think that's enough color. So now the unpleasant task: getting it shoveled into the baggie. Let's see then if we can get it lowered into the corner of the baggie and pull it off. Such a messy task. Put it down into that corner as far as it'll go. Let's see what we can do. <clears throat> that is one unpleasant job. Um, we got pass around everything but up underneath the shear which I had elected to run a brush along because 
think the underside of that wood was actually dry. Well, it's really winter. <clears throat> I think we managed to get the putty. A major round of putty yesterday to cure and uh, even let the shop get a little colder last night. And there's a little bit more of this nasty job <clears throat> up underneath the shear. But it's worth it. It's not really about waterproofing. It is about strengthening that joint. Uh, my wife found out I was using baggies with the corners cut off and pointed out that her uh, cake icing mix bags might be more convenient. So I'm going to give that a try. One more round, hopefully, of putting and we'll be done with that. I'm trying to mix this batch thicker than the stuff yesterday. I found it tried to run down some of these spots a little bit. <clears throat> and all of what I want to do is up underneath. Gravity is not helping. Well, it looks a little easier. We don't have that extra baggy corner getting in the way. Let's see. that looks like. I also reinforced this uh, weak spot across the chine where we had carved down very close and smeared in uh, by hand underneath there while it was upside down. Try to make sure we get a good bead along there. <clears throat> well, we got this. Um, it's been a while since I've done anything out here. It's been cold. But I want to move forward, and uh, before we get to serious trim work, so I think starting on the shear, some of these are pretty ugly. And uh, thinking about different tools for kind of quickly uh, smoothing out those epoxy layers, I'm liking the, the idea of taking some of these grinding discs, pretty heavy 50 grit stuff, but instead of putting them on a grinder where there's no control over the speed, Put them on a drill, and this gives sort of a variable speed experience that I think is a lot safer. Uh, 50 grit could very quickly cut right down into the fiberglass and epoxy layer we built up. But this lets you kind of control the speed of it. Keep working away, probably to use a combination of different tools. Uh, this seems to work pretty well for cases like this <clears throat> where you've got some lumps in a caulking bead and we want to just kind of turn it into more of a finished surface. tool that Doug Labor turned me on to and actually sold me one of his. It's an uh, auto body putty tool, but unlike a rasp, it doesn't leave grooves as you carve with it, and it's kind of nice for some of those difficult surfaces, which I've tended not to even bother with in the past, up underneath there. Thank <laughs> you. 